This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, how to determine if lines or segments are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. In our first section, we're going to take a look at the slope formula and how to use it to do our job today. In our second section, we're going to take a look at example. And of course, in our third section, we'll take a look at a second example. Uh, all right, so if you are interested in learning more, you could always go to mathguide.com. You could click on our lessons section, go down to geometry, and of course I'm going to scroll down past all these other great lessons, and we're going to get to a section called coordinate geometry. And uh, in this section, you could see that we have lessons, quizzes, and we've got even videos. And I'll be adding to this list as time goes on. And uh, we've got a variety of things, not just how to tell if lines are parallel or perpendicular. Well, we've got a variety of other things as well. So give us a try, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Um, it's interactive, it's instructional, and it's just a lot of lessons. Okay, let's move on to our first section. All right. So to understand if lines or segments are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, let's look at this graphic. Now, when you look at this graphic, you'll see that parallel lines are lines that don't cross, and the relationship between their slopes is real simple. They're equal. You could see that if one line is a slope of a third, then the other one has to be a third, and so on. So these examples are pretty easy. Now, the uh, relationships for perpendicular are not so easy. Um, when you look at perpendicular, perpendicular means right angle. And if I have two segments or two lines that are uh, at right angles, or in other words, perpendicular with each other, they have to be opposite reciprocal in value. That means both things. So if one slope is a third, well, let's see, the reciprocal is 3 over 1, but then the opposite, okay, it's got to change from positive and then change to negative. So if one slope is one-third, the other one's got to be a negative 3 over 1. If you've got a slope of 5, or otherwise known as 5 over 1, well, the reciprocal would be one-fifth, but then we have to take the opposite, which would be negative. Okay, so these show you examples of what slopes look like when they're opposite and reciprocals of each other. And in those cases, when you're dealing with two different slopes that have that relationship, you'll have perpendicular lines or segments. Okay, let's talk about now the slope formula. Well, this slope formula may look tiny, but it's, it's mighty. Um, just to make sure that while we're using it, which I will place up on the screen um, for our examples, that you are putting the difference in the y values on top and the difference of the x values in the bottom, uh, because the understanding is that slope is rise over run. Okay, so it's, that's how we measure how a line is, or segment is slanted. Rise over run, y values over x values. All right, let's put all this to use in our first example. All right, let's say we are dealing with um, points A, B, C, D as shown. And uh, let's say that we're trying to determine if line AB and line CD are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay, so what do you do? You're going to use this formula that you see here, and we're going to calculate, like, let's say the slope. Let's first find the slope from A to B. Okay, so I'm going to abbreviate it with M, and I'm going to put a little AB next to it. Okay, so how do you do this? You're going to find the Y values and subtract them on top. So for AB, I'm going to use the 5 and the 7. Does it matter what order I put them up here? Well, it does in the fact that I have to be consistent. Okay, so if I call this point 2 and I call this one point 1, I'm going to put 7 minus 5, and I'm going to put the negative 3 minus negative 10. Okay, so there are the y values, there are the x values. The formula says I have to subtract them. Careful with the double negative. Okay, so 7 minus 5 is, of course, 2. The double negative becomes plus. Negative 3 plus 10 is 7. So there you go. The slope of AB 
Here's two sevens. Let's find the slope of CD. Okay, so how do I find the slope of CD? Well, again, I'm going to put the Y values in top. Six and four. I'm going to put the X values in the bottom. Three and negative four. Okay, what does the formula say to do with these values? It says subtract them. Boy, there's another double negative. Look at that. So six minus four is two. Three plus four is, of course, seven. Okay, what, what does it mean when slopes are equal? Well, I know that by looking at that graphic we had up earlier, that when slopes are equal, I know that I'm dealing with parallel lines. There you go. These are parallel lines. It's just that easy. Okay, let's take a look at another example. All right, here's our second example. We have a new new points up here, A, B, and C, D. So we're calculating a new situation, same formula. Okay, what's the first step? First step is to calculate the slope. Okay, so let's get the slope of A, B first. So what does the formula say? We're gonna put the Y values in top. Again, I'm gonna call this point two and this one point one. So I'm gonna put four and two in the numerator then I'm going to put negative 2 and negative 3 in the denominator. Oop, I could write that a little bit neater. Okay, and the formula says I have to subtract them. Okay, 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. All right, which is just plain old 2. Um, let's calculate the slope of CD. Okay, so how do you calculate slope? Again, you put the y values on top. I put the x values in the bottom. And the formula says to subtract them. Okay, so what's the answer? Let's see, double negative means plus, so negative 13 plus 12 is negative one. Zero plus two is two. All right, now you'll look at these slopes. Notice how one is plus and the other one's negative. Okay, so they're opposite in sign. And let's see, two over one and one over two. Yep, they're reciprocals of each other. So they're both opposite and they're reciprocal. So it means that these two are perpendicular. Okay, so this has been MathGuy.com. I've shown you a couple examples. Hopefully you understand this skill better. If not, Go back to our website. We have lessons on it. I'm going to put all that in the uh, description, right, on the comments section of the video. And please make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and at least give us a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so that's it. Check out our lessons, our interactive quizzes, and, of course, our instructional videos. Take care.